Let's just look at the seven trials again. The first one, Jesus before Annas. This was from midnight to 2 a.m. in the morning. Second one, Annas and Caiaphas together. That lasted from 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock in the morning. And then before the Sanhedrin from 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock. And then another one, sunrise, the Sanhedrin. Pilate, the fifth one, from 6 to 7 in the morning. Then Herod from 7 to 8, and then Pilate again from 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock. Who was the high priest who officiated during the first trial of Jesus? Annas. John 18, 19, the high priest then asked Jesus about his disciples and his doctrine. John 18, 20 and 21 says, Jesus answered him, I spoke openly to the world. I always taught in the synagogues and in the temple where the Jews always meet and in secret I have said nothing. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard of me what I said to them. Indeed, they know what I said. No secrets with Jesus. He was transparent. Annas was silenced by the decision of the answer. John 18, 22, and when he had said these things, one of the officers who stood by struck Jesus with a palm of his hand, saying, Do you answer the high priest like that? Jesus spoke no burning words of retaliation. His calm answer came from a heart, sinless, patient, and gentle, that would not be provoked. This is the way he spoke, beautiful intonation in his voice, always. He even rebuked with tears in his eyes. Have you been provoked and humiliated by someone? How did you react the last time? Jesus refused to degrade himself to the level of this diabolic tyrant. He always resisted the temptation to repay evil with evil. He did not allow evil people to affect him negatively. How are we doing? Remember, he was human like us and he suffered keenly under this abuse and insult. He was a sensitive person. He created this man who slapped him in the face. He came to recreate him at an infinite sacrifice. In return, Jesus received every indignity. Is there a way in which we can measure the sufferings of Christ? Yes, but only in proportion to the perfection of his holiness and his hatred of sin. And this will be a study of a lifetime. Can we measure his holiness so pure? Can we measure his hatred for sin? He loves the sinner, but he hates the sin. To be surrounded by human beings under the control of Satan was revolting to Jesus. But there was something that made the, his, this trial even more severe. He knew that by his divine power he could destroy his cruel tormentors in a split second. He was the creator of the universe. They bound the hands of Jesus, says that beautiful song, in the garden where he prayed. They led him through the streets in shame. They spat upon the Savior so pure and free from sin. They said, crucify him. He's to blame. He could have called down 10,000 angels to destroy the world and set him free but he chose to die alone for you and me. Jewish messianic expectation, what was that? A Messiah to be revealed in outward show. You know, we like sensation. Who by one flash of overmastering will to change men's thoughts and force from them an acknowledgement of his supremacy. He was to secure his own exaltation and gratify their ambitious hopes. When Christ was treated with contempt, 
there came to him a strong temptation to manifest his divine character. He was tempted in all points like as we are, but he never acted in contradiction with his father's will. By word, by look, he could compel his persecutors to confess that he was Lord above kings and rulers, priests and temple. Just like this. But it was his difficult task to keep the position he had chosen as one with humanity. How did the angels react when they saw what was happening to their beloved master? They longed to deliver their commander. And the God angels are all powerful, as we see in the Bible. This is Loretta with one of the Lamassus, a huge Assyrian bull with wings and a human head. Loretta, what does one angel do to the Assyrians? Dad, one angel killed 150,000 Assyrians besieging Jerusalem. How easily could the angels, beholding the shameful scene of the trial of Christ, have testified that indignation and consuming the adversaries of God. They wanted to destroy them. They were not commanded to do this. He who could have doomed his enemies to death bore with their cruelty. His love for his father and his pledge made from the foundation of the world to become the sin bearer led him to endure uncomplainingly the coarse treatment of those he, whom he came to save. It was part of his mission to bear in his humanity all the taunts and abuse that men could heap upon him. The only hope of humanity was in this submission of Christ to all that he could endure from the hands and hearts of men. Can you estimate the price paid for our redemption? This will be the curriculum throughout the ages. Christ had said nothing that could give his accusers an advantage, yet he was bound to signify that he was condemned against their law. There must, however, be a pretense of justice. It was necessary that there should be the form of a legal trial. This the authorities were determined to hasten. Then they knew the regard in which Jesus was held by the people and they feared that if the arrest were noised abroad, a rescue would be attempted and they wanted to avoid this. Again, if the trial and execution were not brought about at once, there would be a week's delay on account of the celebration of the Passover. So they had to push this through. An accusation was to be found, but had gained nothing as yet. Annas ordered Jesus to be taken to Caiaphas. Now, the effort to condemn him in the trial was doubled. Jesus could have escaped this humiliation, but he never left wicked people in their sin and misery. He was still trying to reach hearts during these seven trials. She was married to a very difficult husband. The temptation to leave him was always present. I counseled with her, but there was a much stronger desire in her heart and guess what it was? Every time the temptation came for her to pack up suitcases, she decided to stay and pray. Ladies, stay and pray. When I met her, she was already praying for him for 27 years. He was an engine driver, coal engine. Guess what happened when he retired? She invited him to church and he came and I met him. 
I made friends with him. No condemnation. Not reprimanding him for his cruelty. And I remember we knelt down and he gave his heart to the Lord. <laughs> and he wept and I also wept. I'll never forget the day of his baptism. What did they tell one another in their embrace? They were just weeping, <clears throat> wetting one another with their tears. I took this picture of the old people in the Waldensian Valley, <clears throat> Angronia, at Torpelizzi, northern Italy. Like Jesus, they did not give up on one another. Ladies, do not give up on your miserable husband. Stay and pray. Husbands, please don't give up on your unhappy spouse with all the mood swings. Follow the example of Jesus. Stay and pray. The Savior's example appeals to us not to give up on each other. Let us keep on being kind, considerate and forgiving no matter what the cost. I've seen it so many times. At the end, it pays off. Just stick it out for a while. Are you in, in two different worlds, on a different page? Me and my wife are always on a different page and a different world. Please stick to one another and develop character. The difficulties in your spouse helps you to develop a character. A school, marriage, is a school from which we never graduate. We can only develop character. Don't walk off. Don't walk off. Don't divorce. Allow the challenges to make you a more forgiving spouse. Please, if you have failed, get up and try again. If you've divorced, Try and make up again. I've seen it. It works. Proverbs 24, 16. For a righteous man may fall seven times and rise again. Just keep on rising. Fall is automatic. Rise is, takes a little effort. But keep on getting up. Peter's Pentecostal message. Acts 3, 20, 36. Therefore let the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. I was just wondering, was the man who slapped Jesus in the face, in that audience, and the man that hit him with a stick, was he there? I think through his trials, there were many conversions. And if you take the beating you may see conversions. 41. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. And that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. One day, we will look at the video and we're going to get pleasant surprises. Was this man baptized? Did Jesus forgive him? And you and I, Yes, he forgives us. Even if we slap him in the face, he forgives. John 18, 24. Then Anna sent him bound, still bound, to Caiaphas, the high priest. The first unjust hearing was completed. It was a farce. What can we expect of the next one? John 18, 13 and 14. And they led him away to Annas first, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. Now it was Caiaphas who advised the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. This was a theological fact, by the way. He didn't meant it this way. Caiaphas belonged to the Sadducees, upper class some of whom were now the most desperate enemies of Jesus. He himself, the wanting in force of character, 
was fully as severe, heartless and unscrupulous as was Caiaphas. By the light of the torches and the lanterns, the armed band with their prisoner proceeded to the high priest's Caiaphas' palace. And here is the building. They did some very interesting archaeological excavations here. Here, while the members of the Sanhedrin were coming together, Annas and Caiaphas again questioned Jesus, but without success. You cannot question him. He's got the right answer. Just accept his answer. When the council had assembled in the judgment hall, Caiaphas took his seat as presiding officer. Can you see the hypocrite sitting there? On the other side were judges and those specially interested in the trial. Look at them, hypocrites. Can you see him in his high priestly dress? All the beautiful symbols of salvation. At the foot of the throne stood Jesus, King of the universe. Upon him the gaze of the whole multitude was fixed. Everybody was looking at Jesus. The excitement was intense. Of all the throng he alone was calm and serene. Everybody was nervous. But he was sending out messages of serenity, calmness, self-composure. The very atmosphere surrounded him seemed pervaded by a holy influence. This victim, this criminal, was different. Caiaphas had regarded Jesus as his rival. The eagerness of the people to hear the Saviour and their apparent readiness to accept his teachings had aroused the bitter jealousy of this bad high priest, Caiaphas. Shocking. The judge of the universe are being judged. Can you believe it? What a humiliation. He paid such a big price to save us. As Caiaphas now looked upon the prisoner, he was struck with, with admiration for the noble and dignified bearing of Christ. Never before was Caiaphas in such a company holy atmosphere company. The prisoner was different, completely different. A conviction came over him that this man was akin to God. Jesus was speaking to his heart. The next instant he scornfully banished the thought. No. Immediately his voice was heard in sneering, haughty tones, demanding that Jesus work one of his mighty miracles before them. Perform a miracle, he screamed to Jesus. But his words fell upon the Saviour's ears as though he heard them not. Has a spiritual leader disappointed you? A man of the cloth. It's happening more and more. How do you react? Don't be devastated. Follow the example of Jesus. The people compared the excited and malignant behavior of Annas and Caiaphas with a calm, majestic bearing of Jesus. What a contrast that second, in, during that second trial. Even in the minds of that hardened multitude, rose the question, is this man of godlike presence to be condemned as a criminal? After an hour of interrogation and false accusations, Jesus was taken to the Sanhedrin, the so-called holies, holier than thou people. With the support of the 70 members, of members Caiaphas treated Jesus with even greater vengeance. They supported him. They spurred him on. 
Matthew 26, 59, 60. Now the chief priests, the elders, and all the council sought false testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but found none. Even though many false witnesses came forward, they found none. But at last two false witnesses came forward. 61. They said, this fellow, this fellow said, I'm able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. 62. And the high priest arose and said to him, Do you answer nothing? What is it these men testify against you? His reaction but Jesus kept silent. You know, if people accuse you falsely, don't answer them. You're wasting your time. Keep silent. Let your words be few. During this hour of false accusations and questions, Jesus kept on keeping silent. What should we do when this happens to us? Follow the example. May God help us to be self-controlled and courteous and reveal the spirit of Jesus. His example teaches us that there are times when silence is golden. Isaiah 53, 7. He was oppressed and was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. We should speak less and listen more attentively. Psalms 1 for 1 verse 3. Set the guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Guards were appointed to guard criminals. Should they escape, they should cause, could cause havoc and harm, property and people. They should be locked up. Words could be criminal. Should they escape from the cells of self-control in the inner parts of our psychic, they could cause a lot of damage. It is impossible to arrest spoken criminal words and lock them up again. Once you've said it, sorry, you cannot get them back. We should be so careful. Next time, how Jesus reacted toward people who behaved like demons. My earnest prayer is that we would be inspired to walk in his footsteps. Father, it is so easy to re retaliate, so easy to speak, so difficult to keep silent. Please help us to behold Jesus who kept silent and help us to practice this beautiful characteristic. In Jesus' name, Amen.